four inch at 12 gallons per minute. Uh, 12 gallons per minute per square foot. Okay, thank, <laughs> thank you for helping me this. And the last point that you see here, a very low contamination risk if we have less than uh, um, four inch of layer. Maybe you take this quickly yes. and explain that. Oh, I usually never, I never get to talk when he starts. So, yeah. and by the way, we're like a, a couple in front that, of that, the TV fighting for the remote control that, here. That, so. That's the same thing with me yes. and with my wife. She always uh, okay. keeps the control. So why, why is Dominic talking about uh, uh, two to four inches maximum depth? Yeah. No, I, I probably, I, let me add this. Now, you know, in, in a lot of things you think, well, if I add the more, the better, but that's not the case with activated carbon. What we recommend is just to go for two to four inch small layer. And again, only in public indoor pools uh, on the AFM, if you want to be below 0 0.2 milligram per liter of combined yeah. chlorines. If, if you say I'm okay with 0 0.4 or 0 0.5, you don't have to mess up with this. You know, because our system will have no chlorine smell, everything, but we have some organochloramines, which are not toxic, but if it's in the regulation, you have to be below 0.2, you have to be below 0.2. And this is where we add this small layer. Now, why only this small layer? That goes back to you. So why only this small layer? Because if you have a, a deeper layer, then this layer will ultimately eliminate all the chlorine. That's all the free chlorine that's coming through. I think you, you, you have to add first one thing, Philip, mm -hmm. if you allow. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, a lot of people think, well, this is like uh, a sponge, you know, where, where the combined chlorine and the organics are coming through and it's captured. No, it's not like this. As long as you still have oxidation, let's say chlorine or ozone in the water, uh, activated carbon works again on a catalytic base. That means on the surface of this uh, activated carbon, you form free radicals. I'm sorry that it's always the same story, but that what is, is happening. Mm. You form free radicals on the surface of the activated carbon. Now in four inch, we lose 50%. In eight inch, we lose it all. That means if you go below um, uh, eight to 10 inch, there is no chlorine anymore. And then this is exactly the situation, you know, where the activating carbon does not work anymore, catalytic, you're not forming any more free radicals. And this is when it gets, uh, when it gets like a zeolite, you know, then where the, the organics which are coming through they are will start they, to buy yeah they huh? absorb yeah. on the surface very often on the inner surface and this is a great breeding ground this is the best breeding ground uh, for 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 biology to develop yep. and to, yep. to start a biofilm and then you get germs and pathogens and okay uh, then it's a mess and this great. is why please if you use it only two to four inch okay was it a bit too long it was a bit too long Sorry. but uh it's okay, you know. Two things to add here. One is uh, carbon is uh, hydrophobic. So before using it, it means it needs to be soaked or water in, uh, in water for 24, at least 24 hours. And we also uh, recommend like. that you do not use air to, uh, for air scouring. You would only use water for, for the backwash. Yes, huh? very simple. 24 hours in water, very important 24 hours in water. It has to get wet. It has to get heavy. Mm -hmm. If you don't do it after the reverse backwash, all your uh, carbon is gone. And the ideal backwash velocity would be 16 gallons per minute per square feet. Yep. I'm getting used Which to that. Which gets you a 30% uh, expansion roughly or yeah. even more with yeah. colder water. With and cold water, it's get up to 50. Exactly. So make sure you have enough uh, freeboard. But yeah, if you take this small layer, that yeah. will not be the problem. But to summarize, so we're mentioning this because we believe this is a very effective, low cost solution or alternative to reducing combined chlorine in indoor pools. It can be used, I guess, on top of a sand bed as well. Yeah. Uh, better, of course, AFM because we have no biofouling in the AFM filter. It can be used with a daisy system, filtering really well. but it doesn't have to. Really, we just do this to take out the organochloramine. Again, it's not toxic, but if you have these certain values, you have to do it. There are also some other technologies. One of them is UV, but this is cheaper. It's better. Uh, yeah, it's really good. 
And the uh, other question which came in, last, last one, sorry to say, uh, people said, well, how often do you have to replace it? Actually, mm -hmm. you don't have to replace it, you have to refill it. Because if it's a catalytic reaction, you know, in this catalytic reaction, you have an abuse, or not a, a use or an abrasion of the carbon where you get a powder, you know, like if it's burned. And with the next backwash, this goes out. Yeah, so, but that huh? means after six to 12 months, you have to refill one bag if it's a big filter, two bags. Costs are very small. Uh, we are not pushing this because we are selling activated carbon. Well, here in Europe, we are doing, but more or less on a nonprofit base. So we are happy, everybody who, who buys it uh, somewhere else. But it's just, it's a very, very good solution that we also use a lot in our water treatment uh, department. Yep, and it saves cost, huh? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, next topic. This is one of my favorite. You know, we talk about filter, filter hydraulics. Um, so, you know, I asked Dominic uh, when he buys a computer, what's, what's important? What are the things that you're looking for in simple, simple terms? Well, I looked at, I get the, the software I want, the best software, yeah. right? Yeah. That and then, you need and some uh, hardware. You need some hardware yeah. too, right? So if you have the best software, but, uh, you know, let's say mediocre hardware, will you get the best out of your system? Uh, no, of course, you know, if I think if the, the software works in the best hardware, the best, and mm -hmm. that's quite, quite uh, logical. I'm not a computer expert, yeah. as you know. Um, and that's more or less the same with filters and filter media. Filter media, ladies and gentlemen, is software. Yeah. And the filter is the hardware. And both have to play together. And our software AFM will work in any filter, media filter. Of course, it will work in best hardware, the best way. Mm -hmm. But uh, like sand that you also can use in all the different uh, hardwares, you know, the, the difference is, I would always say, you know, the, 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 the the less good the hardware is, even you see the difference between sand and AFM, even, yeah. even bigger. Yeah. Well, exactly. let's go in. So, Sean, help us understand what uh, good hardware and bad hardware look like. Sure. <clears throat> so, in the U.S., <laughs> in the U.S., we we see a lot of horizontal filters, um, and and the reason for this is uh, is twofold. Um, well, threefold, really. Space, uh, they're generally slightly more compact for the amount of filtration area that you get. So that's, that's why horizontal filters really have come into popularity over in the past, because we can put, you know, 50, 30 square, square feet of filtration area in a, in a fairly small area. We can, we can put them next to each other. We can stack them. Um, but there's, there's some downfalls to that, and, and really it's, it has to do with hydraulics. If we lay a cylinder on its side, Philip has a nice example that he can, that he can hold up for everyone. Yeah, this is just a PVC pipe. Here. Yeah, uh, it's so if you can imagine, yeah, if you can imagine on a tiny scale, a PVC pipe laid on its side, um, and, and you look at the internals, you know, we have, we need a way to collect the water after it's passed through the, the filter media. Well, being that the, the cylinder is on its side, the, the, the vessel is narrower at the bottom than it is in the middle. So even though we have that great surface area in a horizontal filter, the laterals can only go out so far. And this creates dead zones in the, in the, in the vessel itself. The sides and underneath the laterals are not going to see the same water flow that the center does. So even though we've got more surface area, we've effectively reduced it because of the laterals not going all the way to the edges. Mm -hmm. Now, when we look at a vertical filter, uh, we're looking at a vertical cylinder. Water is gonna follow the path of least resistance. In a vertical filter with properly designed laterals, there is no path of least resistance. It's all the same resistance through, you know, up through the media bed. Um, so in a, in a in a vertical filter, we're going to have better hydraulics. And then moving on to what we, what is the best filter design is a vertical filter with a nozzle plate on the bottom. We've completely eliminated any dead zones. There's no space under uh, the laterals, which are not even laterals in a nozzle plate. It's a, it's a floor with nozzles in it. Uh, therefore eliminating the dead spots and creating a, a kilometer flow of water up through and down through the bed. So we're using every square inch of our filter area throughout the entire media bed. 
Um, and, you know, just looking at these pictures side by side, we look at filtration surface area in relation to our velocity, how fast we push the water through the bed. The slower, the better, the, the better the media works. Um, but bed depth is also very, very important for effective filtration. And in a vertical filter, we obviously have much more bed depth that we can work with. Uh, so as you move up uh, from a horizontal to a vertical nozzle plate filter, the hardware becomes better, optimizing the best software AFM uh, that you can use in a media filter. Okay. Okay, maybe one, can you go one back? Uh, one thing I would like to add, I mean, what we learned from, and you were absolutely right in what you said, you know, but this is a vertical filter and this is a horizontal filter. And obviously if you do this, if you make the vertical filter horizontal filter, you have three times more surface. And this is why we are doing it, or you're doing it because it's cheaper and less space, but that's what you're doing. But as, as Sean completely said correctly, you compromise then in the bad depths and you have not an equal flow. You have a, a lower velocity and then you get faster infiltration and in backwash it's just the opposite. You start with a high velocity and then you get slower. So it's, it's not the perfect design, but what is the good, uh, the good news for us, if you use uh, in vertical filters sand and then you use AFM, you will see a massive difference. Even bigger than in the best uh, in horizontal best filters. Horizontal you filters yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's why I say that the, the more weak the design yeah. is, or the more economic the design is, the bigger you will see the difference. Yeah. And let me add Absolutely. one last point, you know, because you mentioned we have a lot of uh, filters which have 36 or 48 inch horizontals. Mm -hmm. I would really not go do this. I would start from two meters. What is this? Two meters is uh, six feet. Roughly six feet, yeah, six feet, diameter. Yeah, six seventy-two feet, inches feet in diameter. You know, it, it it's really nonsense to, to go here for 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 three feet, uh, etc. Because you're you're it will be become so so small to fill mm -hmm. the bed, and then also what often the people are doing to comp to to compensate this, they fill then the the horizontals up to here, which is stupid because this is less of surface than here. So that was a comment for okay. my American Good. friends. Sorry. Yep. You can push next. Yep. Maybe I should go, otherwise we'll never end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Philip, you take that? Yes, okay. So here's a comparison of a proper design of a lateral filter versus an insufficient design. Uh, you see the laterals here go all the way out to the walls or almost all the way out to the walls. Um, this is a smaller filter. Here's a larger That's filter. 800 filter. Yep. By the way, Cold Plus, I mentioned this because I'm involved in this company also uh, as a shareholder. It's so a it's Spanish, a little bit of pressure. Spanish filter manufacturer. Yeah, it's, it's the best filter in the world. Yeah. However, but uh, also if you see the, the big filter, that's a two meter, you know, it's a very proper sized lateral configuration that which allows that infiltration and especially in backwash, you always have the correct speed good enough, yeah. high enough, and that you really get the water in an equal distribution. Remember our last session, the stack on uh, configuration? That's the same thing, that you get the equal distribution down to, to the filter out. Yes. Okay, so if we compare this to, uh, to the right side here, then you, you can see this here. You can see these uh, laterals. This is almost a joke. They are yeah. so Something short. Something missing. <laughs> yeah, it's like too they're, short. they're missing, they're it's missing the other half, short, right? right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And here's another picture. Also, you see laterals not going out. Yeah. So the consequences are during backwash in this example, you are developing these dead zones. This could be four or five inches along the walls around the filter where you basically have no backwash because you have no flow. Mm -hmm. huh? Yep. Um, I mean, we, yeah. Yeah. Another aspect here of proper design is uh, the use of a side class. Yeah. That's two hundred dollars. Really helps. But that would be really good if if you filter manufacturers would add a side glass. Then you see what's going on. And the perfect example for this is in the next slide. Yeah, and you know we recommend the use of flow meters all the time, but really uh, a flow meter cannot even tell you what's going on inside the filter. You know then the speed. That the yeah. speed is correct, but you don't know if it's equal or yeah. not. Let's yeah. let's go to the next yeah. slide. Then you will understand this. 
Yes. So over here on the left side, what we see is uh, a filter that uh, shows a proper uh, backwash. You can see that the filter bed is fully fluidized. It's, uh, it's elevated and it's all over the filter. You cannot see any dead zones here along the walls. If on the right side here, you look at this filter. And the only thing you can see here is really the center of the filter bed is moving. You can see that along the walls there is no movement here. So if you have no movement, you don't have a backwash in that section. You know, it's really important to understand. We don't want to blame this red filter. I think it looks really, really nice. Uh, I, write li uh, I like red color. And it's only 600, uh, that's what, 24 inch? 24 inch? 600 millimeter? Uh, 24 inches, yeah, it's... Uh, 24 yeah, inch. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting better and yeah. better in this uh, uh, in, uh, in, in the mm -hmm. American measurements. Yeah, yeah. I'm proud of me. You know, uh, if you would have asked me before, Dominic, is this possible that you see such differences? I would say, yes, if you have filters of two meters diameter, uh, also six feet or whatever, yeah. but not in such small ones. So I was really surprised to see these differences. Uh, maybe you're surprised to see these big side glasses. This was in a showroom of our Danish partner, and he works usually with these red filters and he wanted to show AFM and this is why he asked the, the filter manufacturer to make him this big sand glass. Yep. And uh, then he called us and said, is this good? Is there something wrong with AFM? And we said, no, it's not wrong with AFM. So we gave him the blue filter from Cold Plus. Also we have a very special uh, side glass. That's not standard. And you see this, it's a huge difference. It's a massive difference. And uh, that means uh, will AFM work in the red field, yes, it will. Will it work better than uh, sand? Yes, it will definitely work a lot better than sand. But the difference between the red to the blue filter will be massive, will be 50%, if yeah. not more. Yeah. yeah. Okay, the same is true for filtration mode. Yeah. We, you know, we have the same situation here with uh, laterals going out all the way to the wall. So we have a very, um, uh, a very equal distribution of our filtration flow here coming through the filter, whereas uh, over here we have these dead zones. And we just made a quick uh, calculation example. If you take a 48-inch filter, uh, which gives you a 12 and a half uh, square feet uh, uh, surface area, we have a flow rate of 150. We, we have an actual filtration velocity of 12 gallons per minute. If we take the same size filter, a 48-inch filter, uh, but it has these dead zones here, then ultimately, you know, we're looking at a filter that really only has a diameter of 40 inches. And with the same flow, this means we now have a velocity of 18 gallon per minute per square foot, which makes a huge difference in the filtration efficiency of the media that's in the filter. So we wanted to, uh, to highlight that as well. Now, nozzle plate filters are filters that are also becoming more and more common here in Europe and around the world. This is an example of what a proper design looks like. You can see the nozzles go all the way out to the walls here. You can see this here in the design, whereas an, an insufficient nozzle plate filter design has, you know, is really, is basically missing a row of, uh, of nozzles here. Also has a centerpiece that is, uh, that is bare, you see this here. So this means you're going to have an insufficient uh, backwash or filtration zone because you have no water flow in these areas. You can see now Dominic has left, so I can move on a lot faster. I'm just kidding. So um, the last point here when we talk about filter design is, uh, is the top diffuser design. Um, obviously, there are different types of top diffusers on the market. You may not think that the design of a top diffuser is important, but it really is. Here are two examples of top diffusers that we commonly see. What happens with this diffuser, for example, the way it sprays the water leads to a deformation of the, of the filter bed. You're basically forming a cone in the middle of the filter bed, whereas this uh, diffuser here uh, forms a mountain on the filter bed. This means your bed depth now has, has various depths and uh, you don't have an equal uh, flow distribution anymore. What we recommend or what we know that works very well is this type design. 
uh, top diffuser. This is for smaller filters up to what? 900, say, uh, 900 one meter, three yeah. feet maybe. Yeah. And then these are for the larger filters. Yeah, up to yeah. three meters, 10, 10 feet. Yeah. 10 feet. Yeah. 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 yeah, small detail. Yeah. Again, this is something that you see if you have a side glass, and this is really important if you work with carbon, because if you have a filter bed like this, you have only 50% of, of the carbon mm. area, yeah. and yeah. this is not good. Another thing to mention over here on the right side, and Sean mentioned it, is the importance of bed depth. Obviously, the more bed depth we have, the better filtration we will get. Uh, especially for the smaller particles as we go through the filter bed here. We have certain bin standards, uh, you know, minimum of 48 inches. Uh, in the US, we see, you know, on the shallow side, we see 12 inches, but 12 is really uh, very, very shallow. Very shallow. Huh? Very very shallow. shallow. Yeah. So yeah. the deeper the bed, the better your filtration. Yeah. And the more and NFM if, you can yeah. sell. If, if yeah. you're dealing with, with retrofits on a filter system that's not going to be removed, if you only have 12 inches of bed depth, it would it would certainly benefit to use the best media possible That's in exactly that shallow right. filter bed. Yeah. yeah, absolutely right. What I said, the poorer the design, the bigger you see the difference. Yep. But that means for new installation, don't go for the poorest design, go <laughs> for the best design which the budget allows. Yeah, exactly. Okay, next topic is how to calculate filtration and backwash velocities. I know this is Sean's favorite. Sure, I love math. Yeah, <laughs> we all do. So this this may be common knowledge to some of you, and for some it may be new. But um, you know, we talk a lot about filtration velocity and backwash velocity related to performance, and this is this is what determines how well a filter media is going to work. Um, so, in order to calculate, for example, filtration velocity, we're going to take our flow rate, for example, 150 gallons per minute. And we're going to divide that by the surface area of the filter. Uh, so that's, that's, and most manufacturers are going to tell you what that is. For example, 12 and a half square feet of filter area is going to give us a, a filtration velocity of 12 gallons per minute per square foot, which is great. We, that would, we would love to see that with AFM. <clears throat> and if we need to calculate our flow rate, if we have a filter, and we want to know exactly what flow rate, flow rate we should be running at to achieve a certain gallons per minute velocity, we would take that desired velocity of 12 gallons per minute per square foot, multiply it by our filtration area, and that will give us the 150 gallons per minute that we see above. And if we want to know, if we know that we need 150 gallons per minute, for example, for, to achieve our turnover rates, that we want or that we have to have because of code, uh, we can divide that by the velocity that we want to achieve, 12 gallons per minute, to find out what size filters we need or how much surface area we need, whether it's one or two filters or multiple filters. So 150 gallons per minute divided by 12 gallons per minute per square foot gives us that 12 and a half square feet of filtration area. Yeah, same, thing go yeah, same thing yeah. goes for uh, you know, backwash. Our, our recommended filtration velocity is going to be 12 gallons per minute or less per square foot. And our recommended backwash velocity for sand, and this is going to be surprising to uh, all of our North American partners, sand should be backwashed at 20 to 24 gallons per minute per square foot to achieve 20% bed expansion, which is really what we need to get the stuff that we've collected out of the filter. Uh, and again, with AFM to achieve that same 20% same bed expansion, we need 16 gallons per minute per square foot. How do we achieve those easily? One, we have to know what the flow is. So we're going to use a flow meter, of course, like the flow viz that you see here. And to make it easy to dial in, we're going to use a variable speed pump or we're going to use VFD drives on our large commercial pumps. Yep. One comment to the backwash velocity. You said maybe you're surprised. There is no surprise. You know, glass is 20% lighter than sand, and this is where it comes from. So if you have the same size, size grain, grain size, grain, grain size, size yeah. then there is a difference of 20%. If yeah. you have a higher grain size, I don't know which sand you're mostly using, then you have to go higher. And we can really test this, you know, in our in our uh, lab, you know, where you see bad expansion. Let yeah. me see maybe this later is, on. This is comparing it to a number 20 silica sand that is uh, commonly used in the US. And what is this? 
No, you can tell me later. Yes. <laughs> okay, Sean, you want to uh, talk about choosing the right filter now also? Yeah, definitely. Um, again, so we know how to calculate filtration velocity um, yep. and we know how to calculate which filter we need. Um, so let's say we have a 22,000 gallon residential pool and we, need a, we want a turnover rate of six hours. That means that our flow rate that we need is 60 gallons per minute. So now that we know what, what flow rate we need, we can divide that by existing filters in the market. For example, a Pentair TR60, commonly used in, in, in our industry, has a filtration area of 3.1 square feet. That's gonna give us, if we take 60 gallons per minute divided by 3.1, we get 19 gallons per minute per square foot. Okay, that's way, way too high. That's much higher than we, what we want to achieve, you know, the, the one micron or, or, or fine filtration that we can get with AFM. And that's what his TR60 is gonna give us. If we move up in the line to the TR100, for example, it only costs $170 more to do that. But we're gonna, we're gonna result in a 12 gallon per minute per square foot filtration velocity. So that's ideal. That's the ideal filter for this. Or we could even jump up to the uh, TR140 if we wanna spend a little money and really see benefit, we can go down to eight gallons per minute per square foot. And if we use a variable speed pump, we're still gonna be able to generate the backwash velocity that we need to get the, the uh, 16 to 18 gallons per minute per square foot of, of backwash velocity. So this is just an example of, you don't need to spend a lot more money to achieve a much lower filtration velocity and, and really have the yeah. best hardware for the best software. Yeah, two hundred dollars, two hundred bucks, and you are on on twelve instead of nineteen. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know it's always limited budget, but if you explain this to your customer, to your end user, he will have these two hundred dollars. I'm sure he will have it, yep. and he will he will be happy with his decision. Yes. So to summarize this also is, uh, you know, again, we covered this in uh, session one. It's the importance of using a flow meter, knowing the flow. Uh, this is important so you can set your variable speed pump the right way. Uh, you can reduce your energy cost and ultimately you have everything under control. Uh -huh. That's the key point here. Know your flow. Great product, by the way, this flow is, uh, that is widely available in the U.S. that we also Made in have, US. Uh, yes, that we um, can distribute here in Europe exclusively yeah. also for flow -Vis. Okay, uh, filtration velocities and filtration performance. Um, Sean, you were just talking about, you know, what makes the difference between a poor filtration velocity and uh, a good uh, filtration velocity. Um, really, when you look at the yellow bars here, the yellow bars are filtration performance to five micron uh, for sand at a filtration velocity here in this example of eight gallon per minute. You can see that at a 12 gallon per minute, which is really also already a reasonable velocity, we're getting a 30% reduction uh, of five micron. If you can slow this down, then you can see how quickly the performance uh, goes up. Now, obviously, this is only for fresh sand, so you still have the issue with biofouling after a while. Keep that in mind. In comparison, you see the performance of AFM. The light green here is our AFM NG, and you can see, you know... The dark green is the old is AFM. The, is the old AFM. I mean, um, there are two learnings, you know. The, the, the slower, the better. Yeah. This is learning number one. Yeah. And even if you just can do it over nighttime with your variable speed pumps, make sure you use difference in fine filtration. Mm -hmm. Not talking about, you know, 50 micron particles, but in fine filtration makes a huge difference. Yeah. And if you go up to 20 gallons per minute, you know, you cannot anymore, uh, definitely not with, with, with sand, anymore filter five micron particles. Yeah. It's not possible. And it's also then very limited. These curves go down dramatically if you yep. go direction of 20. So when we talk about filtration, the slower, the better. Yeah. Huh? What about backwash? Filter, the bigger, uh -huh. the better. The bigger, the better, the slower, the better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sean also mentioned backwash and the 15, minimum 15% 15 uh, uh, expansion of the filter bed. You see this uh, perfectly here in this video. You can see 
uh, how the bed is expanding, how it is lifting, how it's fluidizing, and during this process, how it is releasing, um, you know, the dirt particles uh, yeah. that it has uh, captured, the solids it has captured. Now, for sand to do this, you need to you need a velocity of about 22, 24 gallon uh, per minute and square foot. As we mentioned, for AFM, you can do the same at 16, and you can do this at a shorter backwash duration too, because. Yeah, you know, with sand, uh, you have to backwash longer because we have to rip off the biofilm from the sand grains uh, and then to, to wash them out. And we don't have this, so uh, you can reduce the duration of the backwash uh, time. Mm -hmm. But it's really about the bad expansion, you know. With the bad expansion, you bring the solids to the top of the filter bed, and then the flow takes it really out. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so... Here's a short example of, you know, how to give you an indication of the backwash duration, because that's always a question. If you, we have two examples here. Um, if you have a backwash velocity of 22 gallon per minute in square foot, what that means is that it takes about a minute for the water to raise by three feet, right? So assuming you have, uh, you have a filter here that has a, a total height from the lateral to the top diffuser of, uh, of six feet, the water's going to take two minutes just to reach that top diffuser. So keep that in mind. If you now have a lower backwash velocity, then it will take even more time to, uh, to uh, uh, bridge that distance. It will take, in this example, it will take three minutes. So what we've come up is just with a rule of uh, thumb here. So for it, with this example here, uh, calculate the number of minutes it will take for the water to reach the, the top and then add 50% of that time to give you an indication for the backwash duration of an AFM filter. Um, also in comparison to like a shorter uh, backwash velocity in this example, maybe an existing installation that you cannot change then your backwash duration will be around four to five minutes. Yeah. But also for small filters like here, uh, 60, I think, you know, three minutes, you should keep this as a minimum. You never know how, how the hydraulics internally is. But I think this, this, this rule that Philip uh, explained and he invented, by the way, I think it's a very, very, uh, very good rule. Now, we have here two, two uh, possibilities, 20 gallon per minute or 15 gallon per minute. And you said... Fast and short is better than slow and long. My wife told mm -hmm. me, do it the op op opposite. <laughs> so uh, what's true now? So I don't know. I'm not going to get into this, but I can tell you when it comes to backwash, it is fast and short. And why? Why? Because you need the expansion of the filter bed and you need the flow to release the particles out of the bed and get them out of your filter. Yeah, that's important. You know, some of these particles are quite heavy. Yeah, if you have a very low flow, you bring them maybe to the filter bed because you have AFM, you have a, a good fluidization, but you still need then the friction really to, to bring them to the top mm -hmm. and to wash them out. Mm -hmm. Yep. This is how it should look like. Uh, this is perfect. This is sand now. You know, again, I would be so much in favor. You know, if in the future, in the coming years, you know, all commercial filters have a, a side glass. Yeah. That's another two hundred dollars or three hundred dollars, whatever. It's not the end of the world, but then you're sure you control the process. And you know, filtration is is a little bit like a bin. You know, you fill it, and then you have to empty it. And this is the backwash. And if you can't empty it completely, you still have solids in the filter bath. They will consume chlorine. They will produce the disinfection byproducts. They will lead to, to uh, stronger growth of channeling, biofouling. You have to change the media more often. Yeah. So, yeah. So, here fast, fast and short. <laughs> fast and short. Huh? Yeah. I'll make a quick comment on that because, you know, especially with sand, um, the old school train of thought here in the US is wait as long as you possibly can before backwashing with sand because or with any media, because you want to make sure that, that you're collecting the smallest particles because a dirty filter filters better. There's a fine line between where a dirty filter is filtering better and where it's actually filtering worse and contaminating the system. Everything that we collect in a filter, we, we want to get rid of that stuff. That's why we filtered it out in the first place. We're not just talking about you know, inert particles that are going to cloud a pool. We're talking about pathogens. 
and bacteria that we don't want in the pool, that we don't want reacting with chlorine. If we can get them out, we're in a much better position. So that's, again, why fast and short, get everything out of the filter and make sure you're not waiting too long to backwash. Yeah. In a way, I can agree to a certain extent, you know, if you get uh, more and more to filter load it, you know, in a way you even make it, at least for big particles, you make it finer to a certain extent. Right. You know, when you have reached a pressure increase of 400 to 500 millibar, you have to risk for a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. And this, why that would be for me really, really the limit. And I also would recommend, especially in warm water conditions, at least once a backwash per week. So I would not go yeah. uh, higher than this. And this really counts now for AFM. With sand, I see it differently because of the biofouling and so, but maybe we talk more about yep. that in, in less than We're running four. out of time also. So okay. okay. Oh, yeah. Six o'clock. Need to, need to hurry up. Yeah. Uh, Sean, a word about this test here. This is a uh, glass filter media. Yeah. It's this also, is a, It's also green, but it's not ours. Right. Yeah. This is a glass filter media that, that we tested in the lab. And, um, you know, it, it was very dirty to begin with. All of this, all of the material that you see in here existed in the media when we put it in. So it's a very dirty media to begin with, but at, even at 20 gallons per minute per square foot, it's not backwashing. And an explanation for that it resides in the, the little picture that you see on the lower left hand of the screen. It, it results in, in hydraulics of the media itself or the granule itself. We want, a, we want a granule that is lower in sphericity. We don't want it round and we don't want, and we want edges to it. That, it, that will that surface area will provide more resistance against the water and allow the bed to lift. If we have, for example, BBs or glass beads, very very difficult to lift a bead because it's 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 very uh, it's very slick in the water. It doesn't provide a lot of resistance against flowing water. So, you know that explains why this bed isn't lifting. It it has it's rounded and it has high sphericity. It's just not moving like it should. Okay, good. So there are big differences also in backwashing uh, yes. of glass media. Absolutely. Okay. If you go for us, you go for the right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's easy. Yeah, exactly. So last word, obviously, as you know, temperature has an impact on, uh, on filter bed expansion. Oh, maybe you will not know. I didn't know. Uh, most people do not know, but it has. The colder the water, the more dense it is. Look at the difference. You know, mm -hmm. 80 gallons per minute. Uh, per, uh, per, yeah. Uh, you got to 20% bad expansion at 30 degrees, which is 80, 86 Fahrenheit height. If you're on 50 Fahrenheit height, that's yes, 35. So that makes a huge difference. We always calculate our backwash velocities to uh, 30 degrees, which is 80, 86 Fahrenheit height. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So we're coming to the yeah. end, a few slides. This That's is again one of my pool in, in Belgium as I'm responsible for, for, for the, the European market. You know, they made it very nice, but you see these red crosses here, this was the backwash line. This is why they have these side glasses in. This is uh, this, this, uh, yeah, this glass is in, which is great, but this is wrong, never go up. If you go up, you create an artificial bottleneck and a, a backwash should always be more, ideally pressure free in germany it's even a law that's why never go up always go down so some simple rules simple the rule. faster the better never go up always go down yes so and this is also another good example and that also leads into one of the next sessions yeah. that we will have huh? uh, an example from uh, that we got from our chinese uh, uh distributor he didn't install this but he took us to to this job what you can see here is a, um, a filter, a 48 inch filter diameter with a, a two inch uh, connection here. Um, what we can say, because based on the backwash velocities that are necessary to properly backwash, you will need a, a flow rate of 230 gallon per minute. This is impossible with a two inch pipe. You would need a, a pipe velocity of 15 feet per second. This is impossible. Yeah, it's the pipe, but it's even more problem is, is the multiport valve. Yeah. You know, you can put in a 1,000 kilowatt pumps. You will not be able to pump it mm -hmm. through. Mm -hmm. Maybe you see this in the next slide. Yeah, that's yes. the one we see here. So here we have uh, uh, two examples to just illustrate this. One line is actually something we calculated, which is interesting for a TR140 with a two-inch connection, you know, 
Um, as, again, assuming a backwash velocity of 20 gallon per minute and square foot, we would need a backwash flow rate of 140 gallons per minute. If I put this here on the graph, here we have flow rate, here we have the pressure loss that we have through the system, then you see this red line, which basically means, and this is the, um, you know, it will be, you will have a, it's almost impossible. It is impossible. No. That means it's impossible to get a, a no. proper backwash uh, flow. If you go for AFM, our uh, backwash velocity that we need is lower, it's only 16. Then you can uh, work with this TR140. Exactly. Yes. TR140, I like the, I, I love this, this filter, okay. but the valve actually is too small. You should have a two and a half inch mm. or a three inch valve or use the two inch valve, but go for AFM. Yeah. And what's the other line? The other line was the Chinese example, which yeah. is even uh, even worse. It's huh? never possible. You will never, yeah. whatever pump you put it in, yeah. it, you will never uh, get this water yeah. through. But all about this, next slide, we will talk. Is not the next slide? No, it's That's not. It. In, we will talk in the next session, same time, same place, in a week. And uh, we will talk about uh, uh, really how to dimension the hydraulics. Uh, we will... We will in, uh, give you, we will explain how complicated it is and how simple it is with the magic ruler that you can get from us. We will talk about overflow pools, uh, how to size the balance tank, how you can cheat and make, uh, make big savings, you know, in doing the balance tank smaller mm -hmm. and take this money then to buy bigger filters, variable speed pumps and flow meters. Yep. So we don't want to give the money back to the customer, but we want to that he profits uh, better from this. Um, and uh, give you a recommendation uh, on energy consumption, especially with overflow pools. That will be a very good session. I'm looking forward to, yes, to this. Yes, very much so. Uh, now, 